Um, okay, so uh, it is 5-11, and we're going to call the meeting to order, and if you will join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, um, we are going to adjourn into executive session. I'm wondering if we ought to flip things around a little bit. Um, do you want to do aging personnel first? What, uh, oh, wow, that, okay, that means for us a further much of the work. Uh, we can't do wage and personnel first because we're posting for a specific time. Um, we'll just for we'll just do, stick with the agenda. Um, all right, so we're going to go into executive session pursuant to open meeting law, Chapter 30A, Section 21A3, to conduct strategy sessions in preparation for negotiations with non-union personnel, to conduct collective bargaining sessions or contract negotiations with non-union personnel, fireworks, litigation, discussion, treasurer, collector, and two, executive session pursuant to open meeting law, Chapter 30A, Section 21A7, to review and approve executive session minutes, May 16, 2023. So we're going to go into executive session. We will be coming out, and we will go into open session. Do you need a motion? Mm -hmm. I do need a motion. So moved. Second. OK. Roll call. Mr. George? Here. Aye. 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 OK. We're going into executive session. Good evening. Well, welcome to the May 30th, 2023 open session of the Wage and Personnel. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The purpose of the meeting tonight is to reorganize our board. Uh, at this point, I'm going to ask for nominations for chair. Uh, you may want to clarify that we're in wage and personnel right now. Yeah. Yes, this, this is the wage and personnel meeting. Um, we're going to reorganize wage and personnel, and I'll entertain a motion or nomination for chair. I nominate Joe. Second. Does anybody, I've been doing it for two years. Does anybody want to do it before? Don't know what I'm doing. Oh, you can read the fly. You've got great <laughs> teachers around you. No idea what I'm doing. Let's, let's make the new guy do it. <laughs> no, no, I don't mind doing it. It's just I would, if you guys if you want to do it, it's by all means. I want to learn and maybe do it another time. Okay. Same kind of yeah. 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 Okay. Do we have a, do we have a, a second? Do we have a second? I second. Okay. All in favor of having Joe Weeks as your chair, say aye. 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 Thank you. Aye. Okay. And I'm going to gavel over to Mr. Chair. For thank you. Appreciate it. Um, so thank you very much. I appreciate it, everybody. Um, so moving on, we'll approve the meeting minutes for April 25th, 2023. So moved. Second. All right, motion second. All those in favor? Aye. Right. Right. Perfect. Excuse me, Mr. Chair. Yep. We need to nominate a, a Oh, you're right. Oh, whoa. I moved on too fast. <laughs> Got the uh, I got the the other room in my in my uh, mm -hmm. on my mind. Um, all right, so um, I'll accept a uh, nomination for vice chair. I nominated you. There you go. You got a motion. I second that. All right, you got a second. Any other discussion or nominations? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you for the reminder on this. And lastly, thank you very much. I think it's gonna be great. Um, Except nominations for clerk. Do I have to be a clerk again? <laughs> so I nominate, you, um, it, it's, we can we nominate, nominate David involves? George. Yeah. I was going to nominate David yeah, George. Yeah, I said that. I, don't want to, I yep. want to know what it entails to clerk. Whatever, whatever you're doing right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's really just, a, uh, historically, it's someone that takes the minutes, but, it, but we've never had to actually do that. So really what it comes down to is if I have to be absent and Ed is absent, it would fall to you to chair the meetings. And you'll learn, I mean, the, the likelihood of it happening is, is slim, but yeah. you'll be able to, that's really the, the biggest role. Um, and the clerk 
of the select board meeting reads the uh, I mean, announcements. Yeah. announcements, but there are no announcements for this meeting. Yeah, so yeah typically. Not. Not. No, not for the winter personnel. Oh, not for the winter personnel. Yeah, yeah. typically it's, it's not much. Yeah. No. If you're interested. You don't want to do it in? That's okay. I have other We're just trying to share the wealth. We're just trying to yeah, spread it all around there. I do the minutes, so you're not going to worry about yeah, it. Okay. Okay. You have to do that. That, yeah. that. That's always the crux, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> um, so, and thank you uh, for doing this. Um, so we have a motion. Do we have a second? Yes, yes. I second. Laura seconded. All right. Um, any other discussion or nominations? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Interesting. All right. Congratulations. That's fantastic. Thank you. Now we can move on to the approval of the minutes, and thank you for, for reminding me. Uh, April 25th, 2023. So moved. Second. All right. Any discussion? Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstains? All right, we're good. Let's have the motion to adjourn. Moved. Second. All right, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All right, we are adjourned. Uh, now we're returning to yet another open session um, of our regular select board meeting. And uh, Mrs. Rain, public announcements and upcoming meetings. We are looking for citizens at large to become members of the following committees, Cable and Internet Committee, Capital Improvement Committee, Community Preservation Committee, Conservation Commission, Historical Commission, Memorial Day and Patriotic Observance Committee, Memorial Field, Tru Memorial Field Trustees, the Banner Thomas Mill Committee, and the Zoning Board of Appeals. Volunteer applications may be found on the town website www.hanson-na.gov or by calling the select board's office at 781-293-2131. The town clerk's office will be closing at 12 noon on Wednesday, June 7th and will be closed all day Thursday and Friday for a clerk's conference. Upcoming meetings, select board June 6, 2023, rescheduled from June 13th, 2023, and the select board June 27th, 2023. Awesome, thank you. Uh, and next up is appointments. Um, we have a vote to appoint Charles Barron. So, oh, no, I, I was oh. going to say, um, Madam Chair, basically we just need to recognize um, the, the, appointments. the appointments, right? The board okay. does not need to appoint. All right, so um, we want to recognize the appointment of Charles Barron as Town of Hanson Deputy Fire Chief. Tyler, Tyler Bryan as Town of Yanson Fire Lieutenant, and Thomas White as Town, of, aka TJ, um, as Town of Yanson Fire Lieutenant. Um, okay, and then I will entertain a motion to approve the one-day liquor licenses as printed in the agenda. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. All right, and then one quick um, little thing uh, before we adjourn for the, well, not really adjourning, but going to the strategic planning update session is, um, I wanted to make sure that we are um, thinking about how we want to approach filling vacancies on boards and committees. Is it the will of the board um, to entertain applications for people that we may have removed from those positions, or do we want to not um, entertain those applications? If somebody has been removed from a, um, a position on a board or committee, and reapplies to be appointed to that committee if they were removed for reason. Do, do, what no, is the they were removed for reason. If they were removed no. for reason. Okay, I just no, want to make I sure. I'm positive. Okay, all right, okay. Uh, Mr. Weeks? Whatever you guys want to do. Okay, well, they were, they were pretty, like, strong, strongly but against it. Why would we remove people just to look at that Okay, I just, I just wanted to make sure. Um, so, um, I... I think that we should set a policy and make it, you know, like. I, mean, I think it's the policy. I think we need to discuss more. You know, I don't know. And someone who was on the board and left because they had kids, had time constraints, they couldn't. Whatever. No, I'm talking about somebody, somebody when there was a hearing, no. or we made someone a, who we yeah. had hearings about, and you know. yeah, no, okay. All right, Mr. George, any thoughts on that? Uh, well, if they've been removed for a reason, I don't think you should let them back on. Okay. All right. Okay, um, all right, um, any further discussion on that then? Okay, um, and anything else that we want to talk about? Um, as we go into strategic planning um, update session, um, one of the things that I had talked to um, Ms. McDowell about and Ms. Green is um, in looking at our last strategic planning 
um, session notes. Um, I noticed we did make some progress in some things. Mostly those were things that Lisa had to do um, or having to do with the update of the website. So they weren't really things like necessarily that we were doing or other committees were doing. And I want to make sure that where these strategic planning sessions are useful to people and that we continue to have decent attendance at them. And if we don't start achieving things, we're not going to have good attendance at them. Um, so rather than having um, all five subjects discussed tonight, um, the two subjects we're going to really structure, we're going to focus on tonight are the facilities um, update, namely we're going to have Tony do the presentation to, uh, to everybody that he's done to us about his thoughts on the Quan and Highway and what we might be able to do with that. Get that bubbling and percolating with everybody and get some thoughts there. Um, I think Karen Stolfer is going to be here from library, so she might be able to give us an update of what they're thinking about. And again, nothing has to be decided tonight, but I just want people to kind of like get that foundational information so we can start thinking about it. And then the other thing I asked Ms. Green if she could give an update on um, the citizen engagement, um, you know, with, with the website, what we're doing with the website. And then, um, although this isn't under either one of those um, categories, one of the things that came up in uh, the, I want to say, town administration arm was the professionalism of town hall, um, doing the uh, policies, doing the sick leave, all that stuff. So she's going to provide an update on that. So we have moved forward in some areas, but I think we've got to think about how do we start moving more. Um, and if that means we have to, I really hate to say this word out loud, but if it means we need to form a committee, um, you know, for something, then we might have to form a committee to do that. Um, for instance, like, if we look through that strategic planning update, it's clear. I know you tried to get a TIF meeting going, um, and nobody responded to you. So we need to try that one more time, because that was one of the things to do. Um, we know that the recreation group had all kinds of stuff. Yeah, we, we need, need to, to form a recreation yeah. committee, and then we need to talk about it at one of our meetings. What's the composition look like? Um, what's their charge going to be? We need right. to talk about that. Um, and, and I don't want to, we maybe we can discuss that yeah. at, a, at a meeting, but, but basically the reason that hasn't moved forward is because we haven't done that, and I think we need to, exactly. it needs to be on the yes. agenda. Yes. If, it, if, if we are the next step, we need to be the next step. If it's just adding, say we, need, we want members, we need to add it to the, you know, what, what is the next step? We just need to... I think the next step is we have to form the committee we and talk about what it is, what we think the ideal composition should be of the committee, whether it's just yeah. at large or if we need uh, people. So can we add that to our next agenda? Um, all right, that would be great. Be yeah, and then that will at least, then, yeah. then we can recruit and start to work. But we should have some vision of what we want them to execute. Yeah. I know the group um, had a great list of like potential yes. programs and all that stuff. But I think one of the things was to name a recreational director and then have a committee. Because, yeah, right, if you have a committee and we don't have anybody executing on all the great ideas that they come up with, it doesn't make any sense. Right, but it, yeah, but it, yeah. The, so we need to talk about all thing. of that yeah. stuff. Um, so um, if we can put that on the next agenda, Lynn. And then uh, were there other, any other, and then obviously, um, I don't know where you landed on the high street thing. What, is that objective tweak being tweaked or I know you said we're meeting yeah we, we've had two meetings in a row that didn't even have a quorum okay so, so you haven't had a chance to no have. okay um, and then I don't know what to call the Maquan reuse because Maquan isn't going to be reused um, but like the Maquan possibilities committee or something but like what other possibilities there which again um, Mr. DeFryas is going to kind of mm -hmm. talk about his vision, which is very, there's a lot of moving parts, and we all get to decide how it ends up. It's not cast in stone, um, and um, but we need to form a committee, probably with people from each of the, uh, like sports, library, um, you know, each of those constituents. Pro probably the highway committee, um, mm -hmm. and then we. One of the things that we also have to talk about. Um, when we talk about facilities is the highway building, um, the old, the new one, you know, the potential new one, the Hawks Ave, the existing one, where we're at with all of that. Um, and, and I know decisions haven't totally been made, but like, you know. Regarding the Hawks Ave, could the 
possible things that have been discussed about it be discussed? Yes. So people know yes. that there's other uses being considered? Yeah. Yes, and I think, I think um, one of the things I'm hoping Mr. DeFries tonight can talk to us about is the grants that he's applied for, one of which is the Brownfields grant, yeah. which completely takes off the table municipal use. Right. Um, so um, uh, he can hopefully get into, okay. into that. Yeah. Um, is there anything else people are looking to get out of tonight? I just want to make sure that, you know, we're, we're, we're achieving something. In well, I think a good update of what is, you know, especially I, I'm happy with what's been going on with social media wise. I've been paying attention yeah. to that. They're doing a great job yeah. on that stuff. Um, I'd love to see the website phones happening. But. I think you're going to talk about timeline on that, right? Yeah. Um, and and I and I think you know and I think um, we've made progress, but it doesn't mean that there aren't a lot of things that that we could or should be doing. Um, you know, the Memorial um, Day attendance was a little lackluster, mm -hmm. and I don't quite know why that it is. I don't know if it, it's that we didn't engage people or that it was just an absolutely gorgeous day and there were a million other things people could do post COVID that they couldn't do before. Mm -hmm. um, I really don't know. Um, so, um, but certainly we can always do a better job of reaching out, always. I mean, it's never going to be, you know. Um, so, did anybody else have anything? One thing that I think it's related to both the website and Memorial Day is scheduling. Is that there's so much going on in town, even Joe and I didn't know what time the Memorial Day parade is, to, to be perfectly honest. I thought it was, I saw it was 10 in one yeah, place, and some kind of another. Up there. Yeah, some things were saying nine. The website was saying nine, but the sign in front of town hall was saying ten. And it, you know, so yeah. How did that happen? The website said nine. Who updated that? Yeah. yeah. Did we know? I, I, I actually didn't know. I don't know what yeah. to be in charge of. Because that was a, that was kind of major. Those four, those yeah. four windows. I don't windows. know how it got. <laughs> I got the sign. Yeah. 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 I mean, one of the things I had mentioned to Lisa was I thought. Joe did an awesome job for us first. Yeah, he did. I mean, it was, you know, oh, definitely. Um, he really did a great job. But um, maybe working on the, the messaging there, and maybe a little dry run, um, with, particularly with the music media from Helen there. Um, and um, so, um, so I know you're going to give feedback to him. And if you guys have any other feedback you want my screen to give to him, then just let her know. And, um, you know, we'll take it from there. But a uh, good inaugural event for him, I thought. Yeah, mm -hmm. pretty good. There were a lot of moving parts, some of which were out of his control, so uh, a lot of which were out of his control. Yeah. And then they did the afterwards at the American Legion, and basically it was it was the five of us. There was no, very little, not. nobody else. And, yeah, and I've always wondered, David, do you know if historically a lot of people have come back or not? I think the problem is they don't have that place I don't think has a good reputation of being a great place to go, you know. Yeah. There's other places in town that people can go to and enjoy themselves, you know. I mean it's great. I mean it's kind of you saw it. It's a nice it's a hidden little gem in town that But I mean historically on Memorial Day have people gone back or no? I don't know. Because I mean there really is no more appropriate place to go well, on Memorial Day than there, right? I mean I think it took me 12, 12 years to find that place. I didn't even know that there was a handsome American Legion. Even Tom Chambers, he says, I've lived here 20 years. I didn't know that there was an American Legion in the town of Hanson. So yeah. I, don't think, I don't think they get the word out there that it even exists. Right. Yeah. I mean, we, have a, we have a Facebook page now, and Nicole runs, myself and Nicole uh, run the Facebook page. Yeah. She's posting, she posted all the pictures, she's, posting uh, events or anything going on there, she's posting it, and there's rental halls, and the rental hall for that, to rent that pavilion, it's short money, I think it's like $75 mm -hmm. to rent that, and I think it come, you can actually get it with a lot tender too. Well, I think we need to find a way to maybe next year try, you know, I mean, that's a great invitation that's open to the public, yeah. you know, from the Legion, it's, it's, you know, I think it would make the guys feel good and gals, you know, that are in the Legion, that people care and that they're going back and well, showing many, your respects. And, and how many people they had marching in the parade. Mm -hmm. that, yeah. That shows you that there's not a lot, there's not, it's not a big membership yet. They need, they need more members, they need more e-board members, they need, they need younger guys. Yeah. You know, I mean, not that I'm young, but I mean, compared to an 87-year-old man, yeah, I'm young. Yeah. 
you know? No, I, I get it. I think that's, up. you know, organizationally, every organization goes through that kind right. of that cycle. Mm -hmm. So I think we've all been part of groups that have done that. So hopefully you guys are on the upswing. All right, um, any, anything, any other thoughts before we adjourn? How are we doing this? Um, Discussion regarding filling vacancies in the board's committees, is that what we just talked about? Or that was what we just oh, discussed. So we're not yeah. doing this tonight? Yeah. Um, what is that? The only oh, no. No, um, no, that's on our next agenda. Oh, okay. um, yeah, that, I think she just did a list so that we knew. Um, we weren't planning on talking about liaisons and stuff tonight, right? That's on our next agenda. No, I just wanted you to have that. So okay, that's what I thought. Yeah. I wasn't sure if I had all the information in there. Yeah, she wants people to validate that so that when we do discuss it, we've got, got our act together because she's in the process of validating all the community assignments and all that stuff. And it's a long moving parts. That was easy. Um, Okay, so um, I will entertain a mo oh. Did you want to come this room? Um, I'm trying to bring it up. I mean, I, I have. Yes. I have one. That would one, be great. One, uh, well, a couple little things. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I wanted to piggyback on um, Madam Chair's um, comments on the, the veterans agent. Uh, Joe joined us basically just a little over a month ago, and this was his first go around with the parade, so I thought he did a great job. Um, and obviously we can support him and help him in the way going forward um, with that. And um, luckily the weather uh, cooperated as well. So we're fortunate to have him. He's very dedicated. Um, I'm sure he'll work with, with veterans on the American Legion, get the word out there and stay for, the, for them. Um, second two, uh, just update, circling back around on our master plan, which the town had uh, done back in 2008. Um, the, our town planner, Tony DeFreyas, had applied for a grant through the Massachusetts Growth Program and was awarded $60,000 towards updating the master plan. We got an additional uh, technical grant from Old Colony Planning Council and we, uh, 10000 was approved at the, uh, special, the town meeting for, to use our funds for that. So um, we have entered into a contract with Old Colony Planning Council and we're going to begin updating the master plan. Um, and then I have some very big news. So back in January, um, we had a um, discussion with the board regarding the McQuan TIP program, the Transportation Improvement Program, um, which is a Department of Transportation run program, um, and it's approximately $11.5 million to redesign um, and, and reconstruct McQuan Street on a lot of the areas where there's dangerous curves and hills and things like that. So. Uh, back in January, um, I had come before the board and we had let you know, myself and, and Tony Price, that there's an issue with the water pipe that provides the towns of Abington and Rockland with water. Um, and basically the need for a subsurface utility exploration um, was needed to determine how far below the surface that pipe is and then where it is exactly and what the condition is of that pipe. One of the main issues and concerns was people didn't know what condition that pipe was in since it was put back in the, put in in the 1820s. So it was concerned that the pipe would break or be damaged during construction. Um, the cost of having an SUE, they call it, is about $100,000. The town didn't have the funding for it. Abington Rock, the water department, had no interest in paying it. Um, and we were kind of stuck. The Department of, of Transportation basically gave us six months to figure out how we lose, we lose the project. So I was so happy to report. Uh, just after that, literally the next day, I had reached out to our legislative partners and officials, Senator Brady's office, um, State Representative of John Cutler, uh, I'm sorry, Joss Cutler, um, David DePost, and um, Congressman Bill Keating's office. And we arranged a large meeting between all of us um, our legislative our partners and the DOT team that is um, watching the program, environmental um, partners. Um, so we all talked about the need to find funding for this position so we don't lose this project. Friday, I got an email from Senator Brady's office that he has secured funding for this, $100,000, to have this, sub, this SUE, subsurface utility expedition done. Um, they're waiting for one more formality to go through, but there's no doubt this one they will not be approved by the town, by the legislature. So that is wonderful news. Um, thank you from the bottom of our hearts to Senator Brady's office, to jo Representative Josh Cutler's office, and all their hard work to get us the funding for this. Um, because for the town to have in jeopardy 
$11.5 million roadway construction project because of $100,000 was just heartbreaking. So I'm really happy to report that. Good we'll morning, Ms. Brown. Thank you. And that details that that uh, completes my time. Okay, so well, that's, a, that's a very up note to uh, end the meeting on. Um, I will entertain we're a... Not, we're not meeting, we're just pausing. Right, I will entertain a motion to... Move to strategic so, planning. To walk over there. <laughs> to walk over there. <laughs> yes. And continue our meeting. Thanks for making the time to be here tonight. Um, it's great to look out and see all the wonderful engaged people who do so many amazing things in town, and I can't thank you enough. Um, and if I start naming people, then I'll uh, probably end up um, leaving some things out. We're going to do things differently tonight than we've done in the past um, couple of meetings. Uh, what I want to make sure is that this time is productive so that you want to come to the next meeting and you don't feel like we're circling the drain and not getting anything done. Um, and I think that we've had sufficient amount of time breaking out into the subgroups to get an idea of the meat of each one of those initiatives. Um, and so I thought tonight, uh, in the interest of getting to know one, one another a little bit better and actually moving the needle, uh, we're going to focus on two key areas, and those are the uh, citizen engagement and then the public facilities. And we will, at the next meeting, which will be four months hence, we're also going to change the cadence of these to be four months. Um, and the reasoning here is, first of all, we know nothing will get done over the summer. Um, and second of all, we'll be planning for town meeting and we want to make sure we get through October town meeting successfully. So probably looking the week after town meeting uh, or two weeks after town meeting for the next, um, for the next session. Um, in the interim, that isn't to say that we're not going to continue to make progress on all the other areas. Um, in particular, I have to say the economic development, because there's a specific committee assigned to that, is making progress, and also because we have the wonder, wonderful and talented Mr. DeFry is helping us. Um, so, uh, similarly, we're going to talk um, at the Board of Selectmen, uh, our next Board of Selectmen meeting, of creating a recreation department um, slash committee, so that all those wonderful ideas that came up at uh, the last brainstorming session under that umbrella can get executed. That's going to take some steps. Um, and then what's the other one that I'm forgetting? Uh, and then the town administration, which is just, that's going to be an ongoing uh, piece. So uh, the first piece tonight, where is Mr. DeFries? Um, will be uh, Mr. DeFries is going to give us an update. Now, some of you may have already had an opportunity to see this, um, and some of you may not. I want to set the foundation for what Mr. Price is going to present by saying that this is very, very rudimentary. A lot of moving parts. We need all kinds of engagement. We need all kinds of ideas. Um, and it is the, uh, the riddle of the century. What will we do with the McClellan property? Uh, we know that we're going to be tearing it down, but then that's going to give us a footprint. And what do we do with that blank footprint? And um, it's wonderful to be in a, a, a position where we can even imagine what we could do with that footprint. Um, and of course, a lot of the things that have been discussed, <clears throat> ball fields, of course, we never have enough of those, expansion of the library slash new library, one or the other, expansion of senior center, and those are sort of the top, you know, <coughs> kind of contenders. That isn't to say that's the only thing on the list. Um, we know that there's a lot of property behind where McQuad was that's conservation that we really haven't, it really hasn't been fully accessible, um, partly because it's wetlands, but also just because we haven't really, you know, had any way to get in there. So is that an opportunity? Um, is there an opportunity to keep a playground there? These are all many, many different facets, and we're probably not going to decide all of these things tonight, but I definitely would welcome feedback, ideas, and um, at our next selectmen's meeting, we will be discussing um, whatever we're going to rename this committee because we can't call it McQuan Reuse because we're not reusing McQuan. We tried, but we failed. Nobody was interested. Um, and now that we're going to be tearing it down, we'll call it, I don't know, the reimagining of that footprint, um, whatever that committee will be. 
If you're interested in participating in that, I think we definitely, uh, there's certain stakeholders that we really would like to have be part of that. Uh, clearly library, clearly somebody from parks and um, recreation, clearly highway, um, and you know, obviously Mary, you know, somebody from senior center. So, um, it, but if, if that's something that really speaks to you, we'd love to have you join us. Um, so with that, Mr. DeFryas, I will turn it over to you. Oh, I'm sorry, I lied. Uh, also, I want to welcome back to uh, Ms. Donner, uh, who had helped us facilitate the class. Once we get through um, Mr. DeFryas' uh, piece and have a little bit of a conversation there, uh, Ms. Green's going to give us an update on our citizen engagement. We've made a lot of headway there. We want to update everybody on where we're at. We're never going to make enough headway there because we need to engage people where they are and that's a huge task and we've got a lot more to do there and we know that but we're making it more so that's positive. Um, and so probably what we'll do after those updates are provided is break into two groups and this is a chance we're not assigning groups so if there's something that speaks to you and you feel passionate about it then go with that group and if you don't feel passionate then you know go with whatever group you feel least you know, I don't know, whatever. Which one is the least propelling to you, I guess, um, if you don't feel passionate about them. Um, all right, so with that, I will turn it over to Mr. Fry. Sorry about that, John. Uh, so, when I came to Hanson, some of the issues that were being discussed was uh, expand, the need for the expanding or a new library, uh, expanding senior center, uh, what to do with the McQuan School that had been closed since I believe 2018, mm -hmm. and also the what to do with the Highway Department, which is currently on a site that has limited expansion and uh, buildings that are in dire need of renovation. So after looking basically at the GIS and where all these properties sort of fall together. Uh, Using my experience from like the private sector, I looked at what was available and felt that the highway department being current location is central to the town. In essence, they're right in the center of town. They're about two miles from every corner of town. And there had been discussion about Hawks Ave, which falls more in the south east corner of town. If we Considering the McQuan School has outlived its usefulness and housing was looked at and many other options, uh, I took a look at it and said, well, if we take the ball fields and all the athletic components that are across the street at the highway site, and we were to move them over to the McQuan School so they'd be brand new fields, brand new uh, basketball court, skate park, if so playground, uh, baseball fields, potentially uh, a practice field for football or soccer. This site is 17 acres, and based on the GIS, it appears that it's 17 acres of mainly dry land. So moving all that to that site would now free up the highway department site to allow us to put up a new build, highway building on that same site closer to the road. And while that construction was taking place, highway could stay right where they are, right in the building. And then once the bu new building would be completed, they could just move into the new building and either renovate the existing buildings they have or knock them down. So this plan that you see before you is, like I, I like to state, it's just to discuss. It's step one of a hundred. It's just, here's what you can fit on this site, and here's what you can do. What it will also allow us to do is to give some land to the library to allow them to either expand and double their existing footprint to 16,000 square feet and also double the size of the senior center um, and allow them to in essence stay in their building while the addition would be uh, completed. So it allows people to, it allows us to leave some things in place while new things are being constructed. It gives uh, a new life to the McQuan site. It 
creates new ball fields. Uh, and I know when I was a kid, new ball fields are always a great thing. And it allows for a larger uh, footprint on 17 acres so we can expand even further. And it gives the ball fields and parks and recreation the ability to put up a, um, a building for concession stands. This would allow them us to also take over the old police station and use that space, renovate that space into something else, office space or uh, whatever we deemed, or as part of highway, whatever. So that's what you see in front of you is um, my thought process and these are to scale based on the information available but again it's to open discussions and to what I could see what you can do with what you have and it's all town owned property so you don't have to go out and find additional land or funding to purchase land and everyone can sort of stay put uh, but yet get new uh, new buildings uh, and continue to go on. So that was my thought process. That's pretty much it in a nutshell. Okay, that's awesome. And then, um, I, Mr. DeFrance, if you could give a, or I don't, I'm not sure, to whom it may concern, uh, Mrs. Rain or, um, or Mr. DeFrance, um, a brief update on the use of the Hawks Avenue building as a highway building. Um, I know, Ian, you're heading up that department, but we've got a grant that we've applied for, um, which we don't know if we're going to get, but if we do, um, to clean up brown fields. Um, so I don't know who wants to give that update, because I think it, it is important to have that update to understand why we're even talking about this. Oh, I don't know. I really know what, only what you told me and what I've heard, I, I, the grant thing intrigues me. So, um, and I'd also like to know, uh, I've heard that there was, there's been some mention of other uses of the building, and I think it would be good for the people to hear what those other uses might be. So the, the donation grant, uh, sorry, the donation deed really limits what you can do with Hawks Ave. You, you literally, with the donation deed, the way it's written, it's, you can't go below ground and so if you do anything with, if you put a parking lot there and you need drainage and it has to go in the ground, you might run into a problem. Uh, septic, you might run into a problem. So there's always, the, the donation deed is pretty much pigeonholed the town into what they can do there. Because I think that the previous owners, even though they may have done some work to clean up the site, the way the donation deed is written and the fact that they donated to the town, I think they still had concerns that they may not have cleaned it all up. So they handed it off to the town. I think it's, if I had been, if I had been here in those days, I would have said, it's a wolf in sheep's clothing. I think you've been handed a golden hand grenade, they pulled the pin and ran. And even though they may have told the town, look, in perpetuity, we'll come in and we'll, you know, we'll be responsible if you find anything that's that's contaminated. I think they're long gone. Good luck finding anyone that's associated with that project. And if they were going to do that, they should have left money in escrow to address that, and I don't think they did. The grant that I'm chasing for the Brownfields, if the grant, if Hansen receives the grant, this one of the stipulations in the grant, or there's two stipulations in the grant, is that at the end of it, that the site not be used for municipal use and that the site not be used for cannabis use. Though they would prefer that the site be used for either housing or creation of jobs. And you would think that, you know, if it's a cannabis use, it's creating jobs, but that's one, that, that's for some reason one business they don't want going there. So those two stipulations only come into play if Hansen gets the grant. Um, so it's, it's a, that's the bottom line. If we get the grant, those are the two stipulations that we have to follow. Uh, if we don't get the grant, then it's all other options are on the table. Okay. Does that help, Mrs. Ray? Well, that addresses. Yeah. Yep. And then, um, okay. And then, Jane, uh, Mr. Shad, was there anything you wanted to add from your perspective about highway? Yeah, we're kind of just waiting on the survey. Uh, Mr. DeFreyas has arranged with. Um, the engineering of the site, at, uh, the layout, the plot plan, and then testing of the uh, 
the whole facility, the old police, the highway, the ball fields, and the skate park and the um, other ball field have to be all combined into one lot and recorded. So he's working on that. And then once we know it's a suitable site, then we can move forward with the uh, construction and estimating process. So where are we at with that, Mr. DeFranks? Well, we, the, uh, Proposal was just executed last week with so Weston and Sampson, I believe. So as part of what they're going to do is, as Mr. Shaves was saying, is they're going to do in essence a, uh, a site evaluation and make sure that there isn't a, let's say, contamination on that site. They're also going to do a property line survey. Now we do have in the planning board files a Form A plan that may that created uh, two lots there. Um, one being the one being where the highway department would sit with all the ball fields, to, and it was the property. The lot lines were shaped to encompass all the ball fields. So you're looking at just over nine acres. Unfortunately, that formula was not approved at the time um, when it was brought before the planning board. Based on the information in the file, uh, there was only three members that night in two, one voted against it, so it, it sort of just fell by the wayside. But my understanding is that the property line demarcating, we'll call it this nine acres, has actually been bounded. So in other words, there's physical concrete bounds at every, every angle change. So I think um, we need to bring back that Form A. Uh, it was prepared by a local company. We could probably contact them to get a new Mylar and then bring it back before the planning board and, and see if they'll endorse the plan and then you would create a new deed and so forth. So the highway department would sit on, right now they're sitting on, I believe it's about six acres. Uh, with the new, new plan, it would be nine and a half acres, which is about the same size as what Hawks Ave was. Uh, same size as Hawks Ave. Okay. Madam Chairman, yes. I mean, yes. um, I'm the one that presented that plan to the planning board, I remember vividly. Uh, creating that plan was funded by community preservation funds. It was a joint project between the um, Parks and Fields Commission and the Town Forest Committee, which used to exist at that point in time. And there had been, uh, shall we say, a lack of certainty about where the boundaries were between the different types of uses. And so land planning was hired with all due process to lay out the line. Uh, <clears throat> I personally walked the line with the highway facility uh, at that time on the ground. And made sure it accommodated its present and anticipated future needs as well as what the recreational needs were. And there's approximately 17 concrete bounds in the ground now. It was uh, a tad disappointing that a majority of the planning board at the meeting voted in favor of it, but that if we needed three signatures, only two were available. And as you say, it, it stopped right there. But I'd be more than happy to contribute to any re-examination of that because I was a big part of, <clears throat> of that project, so to speak. Um, that point. And if I may say one other thing, <clears throat> on the Hawks Island property, there are extensive records created by and created for a DDP uh, on, by the previous owner of the property. Those are public records. They'd be available. I believe that before we go too much further down the road of planning anything, we should mine that resource of public records. Right, Mr. Ferris, you have looked at those records, right? The, the, the DEP records? DEP for Hawks Ave? Yeah, for Hawks Ave. The Hubble yeah. company hired uh, contractors to uh, do a significant amount of, of cleanup work, both seeing what needed to be done and doing it. And they, the Hubble organization retained ownership of several acres that are still being cleaned up under the terms of the DEP. Requirements. The part that is no longer being acted on by that, I think the records that we're speaking of should be very, very informative, whether we think of Brownfield or something else, and should be examined to get all the value out of them that we can. Right. I believe you have looked at those records, right? I, I've looked at, yeah, so, yeah anything that. I think we should look at all of them very carefully. Thank you. Yep. Um, okay. Um, and um, Mr. Baker. Um, did you want to chime in? I know you had some thoughts um, of things that might be able to be um, done with the Hawks Ave if it does not become 
Um, they hide my building. Did you want to chime in a bit on that? Or? Uh, we have no place to store anything. Equipment for fire, equipment for police, <clears throat> highway. It would be great for dry storage if we could get some stuff in there and monitor with cameras and surveillance and everything else, but we have nothing in town. Yeah. So, um, Chief O'Brien and I might add, um, our new chief, uh, we're officially in our feet until tomorrow night, but you are still our new chief. Um, uh, is that something that you think the fire um, you know, department would feel comfortable if, if it were, you know, as, as Mr. Baker indicated, you know, secured and, and all of that, storing some equipment there. And similarly, Mr. Shaw, would you feel comfortable, you know, putting some things there if, if need be temporarily? Yeah, we could still have seasonal items. Yep. There. Okay. All right. And then um, I know one um, one thing that had come up, which kind of excited me a little bit, was um, the uh, thought of perhaps Mass Wildlife uh, Fisheries had had a conversation with. Um, with uh, Ms. Green about potentially leasing the back building, the smaller building, um, for the purposes of education, maybe having like educational workshops or something. Of course, that has its own set of concerns because then you have to do septic and all kinds of other stuff that is isn't in place right now. But uh, but at least there are people that are thinking that it's a, there's some useful reuse if, if it doesn't end up becoming a highway um, building. Uh, did anybody have anything else that they wanted to talk about? Mr. Baker, while we've got you, uh, just one moment, Mrs. Mrs. Cavara. Uh, did, is, there, is there anything else, since we're talking about public facilities, all of our buildings, um, I might do a shout out to South Shore uh, Regional uh, School on the nice cleanup that they did at the town hall, deeply appreciated. Um, is there anything you wanted to chime in with in terms of um, you know, your thoughts on some of our buildings and things that need to be addressed? Uh, town Hall definitely needs to be gone through. Uh, the building is getting older in age. The roof is 30, about 30 years old now. Siding, as we already went through with that problem last year, uh, with the uh, water damage, that went up huge. Um, we have to start thinking about maybe doing the whole thing over because it's just going to start rotting away on us. I mean, we have, everything's historical and it's just falling apart. I mean, okay. we, we're doing as much as we can with our limits. And then, um, Mrs. Caparro, uh, I will um, uh, go to you with Mr. Price. Um, I was wondering if you might also be able to give us an update <coughs> on the grant that you applied for for the front part of, for uh, the front part of the food pantry in Bonnie House. Yeah, so, under the one-stop grant applications for FY24, uh, I've applied for five grants, four are uh, completed. And the one that I'm waiting for some uh, budget numbers on actually happens to be the high street uh, in what would be the food pantry building complex. Um, and so there's a $1 million grant available, which is what I'm hoping to, the budget numbers will sort of work out because I think those buildings would probably pretty be, be close to that if not over. Um, I, so it's under, uh, it falls under the underutilized properties program. So this would uh, be used to renovate those two buildings, uh, bring them up to current building code, ADA standards, and allow us to repurpose those buildings for uh, whether to lease office space, meeting space, um, whatever. But it would, uh, it would be for that. It'd be for that specific building, not the Bonnie House. Um, I figured that maybe FY25, depending on what the result is of this um, this grant uh, round, applying for Bonnie House, maybe then speaking mm -hmm. with Mr. Tarvis about that, and maybe doing that as an underutilized property for next year. Okay. That's awesome. Uh, uh, Mrs. Mrs. Caparo. And then, um, Mr. Mansfield, I don't know if you have enough, you might be able to tell us what the thoughts are on Bonnie House after we have Mrs. Caparo. Okay. Uh, I had an update on the library. Um, five years ago, we hired Ruth Collie to do our strategic planning. We rehired her because it's, um, you know, it's too old to use for a new library. So, um, too much time has gone by. We've been working with the MBLC almost daily. 
So Ruth is, we've met with her a couple of times, and um, the trustees have met, then I'm on the planning committee. And what we're doing right now is focusing on, we're doing focus groups, we're doing surveys to find out what people, you know, how they perceive the library, what they want from the library, and so forth. And the big thing we're focusing on is to get more involved with the community, have the community more involved with us, how they, you know, view the library, their thoughts. I mean, a lot of people never come to the library, but they use the library daily online because you can download so much. And also, um, there's a lot of different ethnic groups in the town, and we don't see a lot of people in the library, so I'm trying to reach out to different groups to see how we can better help them. So, and also, MBLC prior, your plan had to be for 20 years out to get the 50% um, funds from the state. Now it has to be 30 years out. Um, Mrs. Caparra, just for those who aren't even happening, what does MBLC do? Oh, Massachusetts Board of Library Commissioners, and I'm the chair trustee for the library. Okay, awesome. So, um, you know, they're looking 30 years out, what's the town going to look like, the population, and so forth. So, um, I mean, we're working on this, you know, Karen and I, mostly Karen and a few others, almost daily now. So that's our latest update. And I think she's got some citizen like brainstorm sessions maybe next week. Yes, or the something. focus groups. There's yeah. one on Monday evening, there's one Wednesday morning, there's one Tuesday evening. I think that's filled up. We invited a lot of um, uh, people who hold offices in the town, people from town hall, people who like say maybe Kiwanis, Rotary. Um, I'm trying to think of all the different groups that, you know, know a lot of people and can probably give us some good guidance or what they feel. You know, we did this before. It's kind of a repeat and a lot of things, the same things we still want. Um, it's just, um, we have to work at 30 years out and, you know, COVID changed a lot of things too. And the library has never been used so much more since COVID. You know, like the take and make crafts, they're so popular we can't keep up with them. There's a lot of different things. And now like the senior center in the library have a once a month movie, you know, a, a movie that's shown currently at the movies. We have it at the library, things like that. So we're trying to offer even more. And of course, everything is at no charge. Yeah. Like yoga you have to pay for, but most part, everything is free. So, um, and, you know, um, Karen has a good relationship with Mary, so they're always working together. And, you know, we want to keep it that way. And if we have a shared building, we have a shared building. It's just, again, we need our own septic system and our own bathrooms. Okay. So awesome. that's Thank about you. it. Thank you. Uh, we have folks to uh, replace the broken windows. <laughs> Tear off the ceilings, and the contractor is willing to uh, give us numbers on installing this existing sash that Alan Clemens built for the for the uh, addition in the back. So that's where we stand right now. And I'm, I'm talking to Kurt. I believe we have enough money to do those things. And uh, the plan is to try to get the exterior of that building secured, and uh, and paint the trim, and to get it to look presentable. In the, in the hopes that that will kind of defer some of the damage and disreputable look to it. Yeah, that would be amazing. Um, so we're hoping to get that done soon. Okay, and um, is there a thought that you might need money from the town or CPC or anything to finish up some of that? Or? Well, I don't know. Kurt's supposed to look into how much exact money we have. It appears we have enough for what I just described. Beyond that, I'm not sure. He's looking into that. Okay, awesome. Is there anybody else who wants to give a facilities update of any sort? Okay. I, I have two yes. quick things. Uh, for the record, the Hanson Historical Society is a 501c3, so they perhaps could uh, launch a campaign to seek donations that would Definitely. Uh, supplement all the things that yeah. we need to do. Um, the other thing is, in regard to the future of the Quan School site, um, has the school committee or anyone on their behalf been? involved in any of the discussions 
uh, of looking far ahead, not just get the building down, but uh, I'm of a strong opinion that uh, when that man was bought for school back in the uh, late 60s, early 70s, uh, Hanson was growing a lot. And while that's tapered off, uh, I don't know what we should be thinking, what's going to happen in the next 50, 75, to 100 years, and Hanson starts growing again with all new housing, due to transportation requirements, things like that. If we were to need to buy land for a new school, I don't know where we would buy that land. And <clears throat> I know we have the Indian School property, we have the Middle School property, and whether there's sufficient space on that to build out for future schools, uh, one can only speculate, you know, some things have been looked at. But I would hope that we wouldn't, let's say, do something with the McQuan School property that would uh, cause us to regret in 50 years, 75 years, not having it available for a school. So there's a lot of things to think about. We've already talked about things that are all related. But uh, I didn't know if anyone representing the school and schools of the next generation of two or three is in consultation with us on that. No, they have um, indicated they do not need that school, that they are no. fine. I, 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 yeah, I, I hear what you're saying, but. Um, not the school I itself, but the property. Yeah, I, I guess, Mr. DeFarius, we can certainly reach out to them to see what <clears throat> you know, they're projecting for growth. Um, although, <clears throat> I think early returns are that they're not projecting growth for quite a few years. Uh, so, hear what you're saying, Mr. Clemens, and we'll take that into consideration. Um, okay, uh, Mr. Yeah, yeah. I, I think this is a great, a great plan and a great first step or whatever you say. It's a one step from a hundred or whatever. Yep. Personally, I'd like to see a few other options. What I don't want to see is, is us to go in one direction and then say, give the town one option and that's either do it or not. I'd that, rather see. Not, no, this is just a starting point. Yeah, that's what I mean. And I'd so, like to see. So the, well, so what this document is is to discuss. And then the group that gets together to talk about this property will say, we think as a group that this is what we want, we don't want that, we want this to be bigger, whatever. And then ultimately that gets presented to the select board, who then is going to present it to the town. Um, so there's plenty of vetting, but I don't think um, it's not really Mr. DeFrius's um, Right. job necessarily to come up with multiple options. Okay. At, at this point, the the, um, the basic footprint is going to be presented to the committee and then they'll kind of work with Mr. DeFreyas and getting feedback from all the different disciplines okay. um, and then have hopefully come back to the select board with something that the majority of people would be happy with. Okay. I just I did like having multiple. I, I mean, I've heard people just say pick up the highway and move it to where McQuan is now. And, and leave everything else, and it's a, a you know, like, a, what, what, how much would that cost compared to how much would this cost, and then give the town something to, to weigh. You know, this is a beautiful plan, but it might not be the Put high least the expensive. Way was. Yeah, I mean, that's a, is, is that an option? Right next to the library and the city center. Oh, mm -hmm. Yeah. But no, I'm saying, I'm not saying, I'm just saying other options. I'm not saying I'm the one that knows all the options. Yeah. I'm just saying, are there other options? It doesn't seem like there's only one option that we should be going for, but if, if everybody thinks that's what we should do, that's what we'll do. No, this, that, that's why we started off that conversation saying, this is just for discussion purposes. Yep. This is one imagining that Mr. DeFrias had. Right. Who even really knows where it's going to end up? Right. It could end up with some of these elements, none of these elements. Yeah. Right. You know, um, well, I guess we'll see. Mr. Kim, I'm sorry. I, I, hate, to, I hate to sit and, and talk like a Donnie Downer, but one of the things that was pointed out right at the beginning of the meeting is moving the needle. And I have to tell you, from my own experience in talking with constituents in the town of Hanson, one of the things that they are absolutely disenfranchised is all of the kicking of the can down the road. Great point that you make in regards to is this the one option. But we do have to look back at all of the work that has been done already to vet a lot of these things that we're even talking about today. Talking about whether or not a school is going to be needed in 50 years doesn't move the needle today. We have day one problems that we need to deal with now that the citizens of this town are sick and tired of that city hall or town hall not moving the needle. We have an opportunity now to really execute some stuff. 
I'm not trying to point any fingers, but a lot of this stuff has already been gone through for many, many years. As far as the school departments, I work in the largest school department east of the Mississippi. When they're losing thousands of students, I don't see Hanson gaining much more. So we don't have uh, a lot of day one stuff uh, uh, to, to, to kind of go over again and look at those options. These are all things that we've all been in rooms talking about behind closed doors, and now those silos are coming down. We really need to start doing some action. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay. just, to, just to touch on Joe's point, yes. um, I was going to kind of say the same thing. You know, Tony, <laughs> what is the next steps to starting to get this implemented? Like, is there a checklist that we need as a, as a governing body to say, okay, formal committee, yes. have this, like, what are, what are the steps that need to be done to stop implementing a plan like this for a high well, as far as the <clears throat> quad school, I mean, uh, town administrators begun the steps already to get the building taken down. Yep. So that's going to happen in the near future, I think, in the fall. Um, and working with the uh, highway superintendent, we we're beginning the first steps of examining his the existing site of the highway department and seeing what what's going on there. So, like I've said many times, and I'll sound like a broken record, it's, this was for discussion purposes. This is, this is to give the town an idea of what they can actually do with these sites. This is step one of a hundred. Um, we know that municipalities, you know, in the private sector, we get it done. In the municipal sector, it's a little bit slower. But it's just, to, we're, I say we're, we're probably at step one. And we do have a checklist, and, and obviously it comes down to finances, you know, whether it's through grants, um, you know, grant monies, uh, CPC money, or, or whatever, however we can figure out to obviously pay for this. Do we have any rough idea about how much something like this if it was just put in today in the field to cost? No, we, ha we haven't done anything to Just the fields? Or to just the fields. So I'm just saying yeah. if, if McLean was in the area was taken down, <coughs> how much would just the field no, we haven't looked at that yet because we have, we haven't reached. I didn't feel that step thirty. Right, I didn't feel I didn't feel that we we, we had reached the point of as Mr. Heal says, you know, is 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 this what we're going to do? Is it definitely what we're going to do? Until you definitely know what you're going to do, you know, that's kind of just you're going to spend it to maybe get that budget, maybe never use it, or if you spend it, maybe waste the money. So we sort of have to figure out what. Does the what does Hanson want to do? I'm the, again, the, here's an option that I think, based on my experience, could solve three issues. Mm -hmm. Mr. O'Brien, I was just going to jump in. Um, just a form parks and fields and parents for a lot of kids that have used the fields. The, the earlier that you put parks and fields involved with this, um, especially with the work that we've done with CPC before, because we actually did the joint one, Laura was the chair. Like, Committee at the time um, for it, but the good thing with the with the members that are on CPC, especially now, a lot of them are baseball and football guys, uh, soccer and things like that. They're going to call out the towns for you and get you all kinds of quotes and things like that rather quickly, um, which which might help you out too and take a little bit off of your plate for doing it. At least you can get some rough numbers and that kind of stuff. So I think that's why this it. whatever yeah. new committee did. With, so to answer your question, in my mind. Those things Mr. DeBrye said, and then next step is to form the committee to look at this, which is going to be parks and fields, um, senior center, library. I, I don't, and then I don't know who else really wants to be part of it, but maybe just a bunch of citizens at large in addition to that, um, so that we can get a good cross pollination of ideas and that we can make sure that we're meeting as many competing needs as possible on that one property. Um, and I know that's a lofty goal, but if you don't set a lofty goal, then what do you set a goal? So, it's, it's um, so it's that's that's it's that's where we're at. Um, does the McCormick reuse have the amount of what it would cost to demo the building? We already have that. So We've yeah. RFP'd. Uh, Miss Miss Green, did you want to speak to where we're at on that? I'm sure. So we did um, have the bid, um, and it basically it's amazingly enough, but it cost us just under a million dollars to demolish the building. Um, and so it's basically flat, flat rate. flatten the, uh, the property. Um, we hope for that to happen in the fall. Um, we 
are fashion myself and, and even help Eric, we're, we're um, going to be putting together and fashioning an argument for ARPA funds. Uh, for this, we're, we're trying to look at some different options to put that together so that we can get ARPA funds to cover this, um, which is great because that leaves money open for many of the other things. And if I may also speak on the baseball fields, um, people that have kids that are in baseball, youth football, youth soccer, um, I don't know, you know, Whitman, I grew up with my son in the baseball uh, since he was five. Whitman used to hold tournaments in the summertime for the traveling teams. And I'll tell you, that brought a ton of business to the town. It brought teams, it brought business, it brought money. Um, so looking at this as an economic development is, is definitely worth considering because it will bring money to the town in, in many different ways. And you never know. It, I mean, it could bring people from Connecticut, New York. You, you never know what could grow out of a project like this. Um, it, it, where it's located, right across the street from the school, I mean, right now where the fields are, people park it in New York, and they walk across 58. Um, so, not the best setup for that. This way here, they're not walking across busy streets. Um, and then you have Senior Center and Library right there. It's just such a combination of the youth and we have our elders and our library. It's really a great collaborative to get the whole thing together in that one spot. And again, I speak of it because I was involved in Whitman. And if you go and past any baseball fields on a weekend, you see all the cars, you see all the people there. It brings business to the town, it brings notoriety, it gets the kids involved in the activities. And it really, it, it points them all in the right direction. It keeps them out of trouble. So that's something definitely for us to look at is what is this going to do for our kids moving forward. So, yes, Mr. Sergio. Uh, yeah, um, I'm I'm in favor of this project in concept, you know, without knowing the costs. And I mean, I hope that committee would involve Hanson in Baseball as, as they put a lot of money into the existing site. I talked with Emmanuel Doctor, um, you know, he ran for a city lab and knows Hanover. So I just he just gave me a word of caution that. They built that Forge Park complex, which is considerably bigger than this, yes. what we're talking about here. And they were promised lots of rental uh, revenue, which he said hadn't materialized as of yet. So I think we just need to be careful about you know putting too, many, too much hope in that. Um, we do get rental revenues from uh, the Robinson Street baseball fields and, the, and other fields. Um, so we, it's not that there's not interest in using the fields, but uh, I just think we need to be, we, we, we shouldn't expect that it'll pay for the facility. No, oh no, 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 I don't think that's the case. And to the extent possible, we'll try to leverage as much grant money as we possibly can to the extent that community preservation money is appropriate and the community preservation committee agrees that it's a project that they'd like to support, we'll try to leverage that money. Um, so I think there's a lot of opportunities to do things at little or no additional taxation, yeah. um, which is always an ideal yeah. scenario. Madam Chair, if I may, um, Hanson has an open space and recreation plan. It's about the third version that we have. Those things have a, uh, a, an approved life of seven years. Um, our plan, I believe, expires next year. And we therefore are talking about things in that plan that cover a lot of the time right here. Um, open space and recreation, including active recreation, and uh, the need to create a plan for that. Having the current plan, which some of us had several iterations of experience with, it's not something we sit down right over the weekend, but it's very worthwhile because it creates eligibility for uh, uh, the Department of Conservation Services uh, offers grants for developing parks, for purchasing open space, and it might be something else too, but you can't even apply for those grants until you have an approved open space and recreation plan. So that's an exercise we've done a few times, and I think we could do it more efficiently this time than the two and a half years it took last time. Uh, there's better models out and right, I think. But that need is upon us now. We've had uh, several successful, we've never failed in an application for grants from that, division, that department. Uh, but we need to keep ourselves eligible to apply. And that effort, which would involve um, probably the 
the, the planning department of conservation and some others uh, open uh, parks and fields, that will be a necessary worthwhile effort that uh, will support everything we're talking about. And so who's going to initiate that and when will it be initiated? Planning and conservation were the two sort of co-sponsors of it before. It was, the plan we have now was largely written by a person who was simultaneously the town planner and the town conservation agent. Those that two positions are currently no employed at OCPC? Yes. How, okay. Yes, All correct. Right. Okay. But um, conversations should start pretty much like yesterday on how to renew that plan and keep it coming. Okay, and, and I appreciate you saying that. Similarly, uh, Mr. DeFrias is one of the few towns that's actually complied with the MBTA community's um, deadlines, which allows us to apply for grants there as well. Um, and uh, there's a lot of controversy around that and lawsuits and whatever, but happy to say we will not be one of them because Mr. DeFrias has complied with the deadlines. Um, so, um, so, and to the extent that there's anything that would um, allow us to continue to apply for grants, whether it's green communities or whatever it might be, the energy committees or whatever, um, you know, please work with Ms. Green and we'll make sure that we get those done. Uh, Mr. Kemet. Yeah, I'd just like to add, in, like in, in the uh, planning, we have the master plan and you know, in the open space, we have the open space plan. And I think it's important that we have committees considering uh, adding recreation and so forth like that. I think uh, both sides of the fence need to get together and discuss more closely how that little plan will evolve to the point where we're looking for grants that uh, people will see that we're trying to move forward. Uh, uh, that's an excellent point, Mr. Kevin. And in my ideal dreamlike world, um, I would have somebody from planning, somebody from conservation, parks and fields, senior center, library, board of health, um, you know, all of the, all, basically every land use group that we have, um, just so that, you know, we don't have this well-intentioned group of volunteers coming up with a plan and, whoops, we didn't know those were wetlands, whoops, we didn't, and I know Mr. DeFries will help us, you know, steer the ship because he's, you know, very versatile and knowledgeable about land use, but it's always helpful to have, you know, uh, people from the various disciplines too. Um, I just think it makes it a stronger, um, you know, more bulletproof uh, project. So, um, Ms. Mrs. Rain, yes. I just want to speak about the, um, the, the fields, the Hanover fields versus the Hanson fields. I'll say one thing about the Hanover fields, nobody knows they're there. That is so far on the beaten path, ours are going to be front center in a fairly accessible spot. And I think that if people were to keep in mind the idea of pushing a business, rent, you know, getting leagues and everything else in there, I think that it would be a, a really good, it just is something that you can't just say it's available and then not push the, uh, Push for it, is, I guess, is what it's I'm trying to say. That is a beautiful complex. So really it's gorgeous, it. but it's way in the woods and nobody knows yeah. it's there. Yeah. In a residential neighborhood. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Um, okay. All right. So um, we'll, we will ultimately break out into the public facilities subject, but I just wanted everybody to have that foundational knowledge. Um, and now, if we can, uh, Ms. Green, if I can prevail upon you, give us a little update on our citizen engagement, where we have the website where we have a social media outreach and the like that would be amazing. Okay, so um, in the administration, um, we have, um, we, we, think we have a letter of engagement and we've um, brought on board a consultant who's going to be looking at uh, reviewing all of our policies, personnel policies, uh, our personnel manual, um, and they're going to be looking at those and, and making sure we're all up to date with all labor laws. Um, and they'll have they'll help us with putting together new policies that are updated. Um, we're going to have them help us with some job descriptions. Um, it's human resources aid, so this is what they do for a living for um, municipalities. So they will help us be all up to date. All the personal personnel policies will all be put in a nice little manual that will be available to all employees that we'll go get. So there will really be uh, a complete understanding of the expectation of a municipal um, employee. So we are moving forward in that direction. Um, as far as our uh, 
Committee and Civic Engagement, we do have Capital Strategic Solutions doing a very good job with their Facebook uh, media pages, uh, Facebook, Instagram, um, Twitter, and there's one other one I think they're working on as well. But um, from the data that they're collecting, we are increasing um, the followers quite a bit uh, from prior to them coming on board. They have a really unique, clever way um, and, and really very nice way of, of putting information out there. Um, it's animated, it's, it's really eye-catching. Um, so they're doing a very good job with getting the information out there. And of course, we keep moving forward every day with more and more outreach. Um, we've, we've released our first um, town hall newsletter to all the employees within just to kind of give them a little heads up on what's going on in the departments. So the, the, uh, it took a little while to get the train moving, but it is starting to move. Um, it's a good direction, and we're going to keep going and keep expanding our communication with the community and employees. So we're really striving to work on that. Um, website is also a big part of that. So we have um, Engage to Revise. Um, we are leaving Civic Plus behind, and we have engaged Revise to build us a new website. Uh, that process has started. Um, we hope that it, in, in they are building everything as we speak, uh, working with our IT director, Steve Moeber, um, to get that up and running. And hopefully three to six months, we'll start seeing the new website um, come to light on the, uh, for the town. This is going to be much easier to use, much easier to update. Um, so hopefully we'll see a lot of improvements on our website as far as, again, getting more information out there and being user-friendly to the residents that are trying to look at it and use it. Um, Again, we're using ARPA funds for that, so really, really, really good use um, of the money. And it's going to save us money overall, too, as far as the support fees and uh, technical fees that go along with that. It's going to save us quite a bit of money over the current um, website provider. Also, too, um, we are going to be, we're doing a wage classification study right now with Collins Center through a grant that is focusing on our department heads. They're going to update job descriptions. They're going to do surveys of comparable towns uh, just to make sure that we're staying competitive so that we don't lose employees. I mean, right now, towns are poaching other employees. It, it's really, it's, it's amazing. It, it's eye-opening uh, to a point where I actually said to one town administrator, stop trying to poach one of my employees. And he looked at me in surprise. He didn't know that I knew about that. And he's like, oh, OK. I said, stop it. Just don't take my employees away. Stop it. So this is really happening out there. Um, so we need to do the best we can to make sure that we're competitive and that we keep the good employees that we have. We have a wonderful team right now. This town is moving in such a great direction right now. Um, we need to do everything we can to make sure we hold on to the, these talented folks that we have on board. Um, and what else? I think that's a great summary. That was some of that was citizen engagement, some of it was town administration, but all fantastic that's updates. Um, what can we all do to support the efforts for the citizen engagement? Um, you know, both on social media, Facebook, like what can, website? What can the department heads and the committees? What can we do to help you? Well, just make just you know, make sure the, all the information is accurate and it's clear of, of what people need to do. Um, Lynn and I answer phone calls all day long from people calling looking for this department or that department or they were told this by this department but they come to this department because they didn't believe what that department said or there was confusion. So just um, do everything you can to make sure that, that they understand on the first phone call what they need to do, where they need to go, who they need to see, what paperwork they need to fill out because uh, it will help us a lot. Um, and just you know, keep working with Capital Strategic Solutions, giving them information to get out there, because um, that's where they're really getting all the information is from the departments and the department heads. So anything new that comes up, anything excitement, uh, send me an email. I'll send it to them, or just reach out to them. They're happy when you talk to them and, and give them updates because they get it out there. Um, and I think residents are really starting to notice the difference um, in how we're presenting our Facebook pages so and our, our social media pages. So that, that's the best that we can say. Um, and one other thing, um, I just want to remind people, I'm sure everybody's aware, but just in case you're not, um, we did pass a bylaw um, about a year ago um, that requires recordings of meetings by every committee um, in town to be posted on uh, through Whitman Hanson Community Access Television. 
They don't have to be videotapes, but they have to be recordings of some sort. Um, so we're trying not to hamstring folks if you are technically challenged um, or if you just don't, you know, if it's just a, a hale and hearty group of volunteers and you don't have anybody who's, a, you know, particularly great with video or social media, we've got you covered. Um, all we need you to do is just put a little recorder there, record it, send it to Whitman Hanson Community Access Television. And I definitely don't want anybody, you know, I don't want this to be a pitfall for the unwary and have any committee uh, violating our own bylaw. Um, so I just want to remind, and I think that's in the spirit of citizen engagement, right? If we're not getting information out there that people can uh, bring themselves up to speed on what committees and, and you know, departments are doing, um, you know, where they can get information, if we're not putting that information out there, then we're going to reap what we're showing. Um, we're going to reap uh, people that don't don't have a level of awareness that's going to be helpful to them about what's going on in town. And I know um, all, it really is all of our goal, right, to have, let everybody know about the good stuff we're doing. We're all doing good work. We just need to let people know about it and give them the information that they can use. So I just wanted to kind of remind, if we're talking about citizen engagement, just to remind folks that um, that, that is a bylaw. Um, and certainly, if you need any support from our office, reach out to Ms. Green, and, um, and we'll see what we can get you in the way of technical support or equipment or whatever to help you comply with that. Um, anything else, um, Mrs. Rain? I know you originally had kind of spearheaded that citizen engagement um, uh, subgroup. Was there anything you wanted to mention? Or? No, the only thing that I, I just really think the website itself is, is key, and I'd like to be involved with that when it comes time to organizing this stuff. I'd like to, Lisa was going to key in with uh, capital, you know, what, what's the name of the strategic? Capital strategic. Capital strategic yeah. solutions. It's a sufficiently ambiguous yeah. <laughs> <laughs> company that you really can't necessarily say what they do. Um, so, um, okay, that's awesome. And, um, and um, Mrs. D Ms. Diaz, um, I'm being blinded right now, but um, I, I know you are representing the Whitman Hanson Community um, Access Television, um, and uh, which I always want to call cable, but I know it's not. Um, and I know that you've got some good resources there uh, for for committees and and you know for the town to utilize. And I didn't know if you wanted to kind of speak about that. Um, absolutely. Yeah, we do have a lot of resources, and there's a lot more we could be doing in Hanson in highlighting what's happening in Hanson, and then putting it on the cable channel so that people know um, what's happening in town hall so that they can go and say maybe into the <clears throat> select board's office and find out exactly what happens there. Find out what happens or what resources are available. Maybe like if we interviewed somebody on the board of health or on the planning committee on conservation, explaining, just you know, an interview, what they do and, and how this is done. Maybe get more people engaged. Um, and wanting to do that, but I think it's a, a, a businesses, local businesses as well. Um, I think that I, I love the idea of the maybe um, you know interviewing people about the different um, committees because one of the things that we run into and we're running into it again this year um, is where we have openings and people just aren't very clear about. What does that committee do? Is this a lifetime commitment? Do I have to get my second born child? Like, what's the level of commitment that they're requiring? Um, you know, and nine times out of ten, you know, if it's like, say, community preservation, it's, you know, once a month and it's like three hours of delightful, you know, discussion with people from all these different committees and boards that are like working on these projects and, and it's three hours and it's awesome and you're gonna feel good about giving back to the community. And I don't mean to pick on community preservation, but it was one of my favorite committees I ever served on. Um, and, um, and you know, similarly, you know, there are other committees like, um, I know Capital Improvement Committee. I mean, when the public gets tough, you guys are meeting really, really, you know, like you may have to meet more frequently, but again, it's not a lifetime commitment. You don't have to give up all of your, you know, extracurricular activities to be part of that committee. Um, and I think sometimes people are thinking, oh my gosh, I don't know if I've got the time. Um, but it's a really great way to give back to the community and you learn something. And as in almost every volunteer opportunity, I think you get back more than you give. 
Um, that's just my two cents worth, at least that's what I tell myself on a daily basis. Um, so, um, you know, I, I, I think that that would be a great way for us to kind of educate people. Oh, what is that conservation fishery? Because I know Mr. Clemens came and talked to us about adding some, uh, you know, some associate members, um, which we think is a great idea. Well, that's going to be three potentially new members and training kind of thing. And it would be great if we had a little video of people said, geez, I might want to apply, but I don't even know what the yeah, Conservation Commission does. Well, here we go. Here's the handy little link to an interview with Mr. Phil Clemens about what the Conservation Commission does. There you go. Um, so that, that's great. Now, how would we go about um, doing that, Ms. Diaz? Well, yeah. Can you call and talk to Eric? Um, and I'm sure we could set something up, especially with training. So video recorders, are very, very simple to use, um, and we can make sure they're accessible. Um, you literally just press the button, set it on the table. It's that easy. Um, and it could be instructions on how, how to upload it. Um, it's very, very easy for people to do if they don't want a camera in the room. Okay. Um, and it doesn't make it easy because I don't know what nights people meet, so I would never know when the plane board is meeting. Um, and this way they could find it. Um, you can find it on YouTube. Okay, that's awesome. Um, Mr. Video, Mr. Weeks, did, did you guys have anything you wanted to add about citizen engagement or what, what you're hoping for us to get out of this? Or, no? Okay. Can I just add? Yeah, I recently saw on Facebook a really well done um, call for volunteers for the Senior Center. I couldn't figure out who put it out. But it was extremely well done in saying we need people that could do this or do that. And I think that was our new little social media campaign. Yeah. They it just have a good well way done. of spinning things. I don't they just yeah. have a way of kind of spinning it and catching you and, mm -hmm. and yeah, an interesting way of portraying the information. Yeah. Um, okay. Anybody else have anything? You know, Robbie, I have to say, for instance, um, I don't mean to get familiar with you, but Mr. O'Brien, Chief O'Brien, um, I, I think the fire department does a great job of engaging and telling people what's going on, which is important, right? And similarly, the police do a great job of doing that. Um, and I, I really like to see us, you know, library does a great job, senior citizens, Senior Center does a great job. We have a lot of people doing a really good job of getting the information out there. Um, now we just want to make sure that we're that we're consistently reliable. So it's not just you guys that are really good, but it's everybody. So I, I was going to ask, but I was going to go offline, but I might as well ask for everybody. Is just because I've got a great IT and guy that can do all that stuff in house. Would we be able to send PSAs to? The community, uh, to mm -hmm. community access yes, to okay, yeah. and they'd be able to upload it to the okay, yeah. okay, I got so maybe it's going to right now. So. <laughs> okay, great. Uh, uh, Miss Donna, uh, I'm gonna turn it over to you, and I think we're gonna yeah, sure. Um, so thanks for inviting me to join you tonight, and it's very um, it, it's exciting to hear about all the progress and updates since the last time this group um, met. Um, but, the, and also, uh, there were some interesting questions and next steps um, and ideas that came out of this discussion. And in the spirit of getting things done, um, what we're going to do is we're going we're gonna to have the t two groups, um, and one will be uh, the community engagement group. And there's some other ideas, and I know, and I'm going to ask our, uh, our past uh, facilitators of those discussions, uh, Ms. Rain and uh, Mr. Weeks, to play that role again in, in these groups. Um, a couple of things that I, you know, I heard that I just want to like summarize. Um, one was trying to the interconnectedness. You know, is thinking about you know even a, as this this plan um, that Mr. Uh, uh, DeFreyas you know presented. There were, you know, regardless, like it's a placeholder. The idea that it's like, what are the um, other next steps um, that might be uh, that feed into this? Like, what are some other areas that several of you had some ideas that um, seem like it would be great to kind of um, in the future, like map out, like almost like a, you know, the project like plan. And there's so many other activities and planning activities. Um, like particularly with the, the land use uh, plan that's coming up 
and how, how those things interrelate. But there's definitely a lot of knowledge in this room that can sort of help play into that. Again, this is about the interdisciplinary planning part of this. And then with um, uh, citizen engagement, uh, you know, there, citizen engagement has like a pretty, you know, it's a pretty big agenda. And it's exciting to see that people are starting to look at the website and there's more eyes on it. Um, and also there's opportunities to talk about, um, for example, talking about uh, the, you know, how to recruit people and telling folks about uh, the various committees and openings, but there were also other ideas that came up um, that could contribute to that as part of this, our last session. Um, and so what I'd like to do is to ask, I think maybe the easiest thing is just is to decide which side of the table um, folks are like, I'm just going to say, because um, Tony, you're sitting over there, I'm going to say this is the facilities, and if Mr. Uh, Weeks could come over to the side of the table and facilitate that discussion, anybody who wants to participate in that, again, it's about, um, you know, other next steps that might be required to kind of bring this sort of planning process to the next stage. And then the other is for communications, and I'm, I'm going to pop in and listen but, um, and just sort of think about what are some other items that there's next steps on. And I do recall from the last session, there were some great ideas that came up that need some traction. Okay. And how much time are we gonna have? Um, I think, I would say like 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that seems like a, okay. Right. All right, so what I'm gonna ask um, is that um, somebody from your, your group, whoever you want to designate, the chairs can report out, just report out what um, some of the next steps you identify um, in each, you know, each, I'm going to, each group, and I want to start with, um, I'll call it the, the uh, Public Facility Summit, um, and um, ask you to, it was a lively discussion, and, um, what? Yeah. 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 So, uh, who's going to, who's going to report out? Joe Campbell. Where is Joe Campbell? Where Joe Campbell? Joe left. He's scared away. What? Joe Campbell. 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 Joe So, as far as the facilities go, uh, kind of a mission statement would be to strategically uh, repurpose existing town of Hanson buildings with all stakeholders' input. Uh, some of the main topics that we talked about are, are identifying existing structures that we know that we already have. 1055 Main Street, so that's the old fire station. Talking about Hawks Ave, there's always been talks about Hawks Ave. Talking about the condition of the town hall. Uh, High Street, the extension off of 228, which is the form, which is the food pantry, beekeepers, nurse building, but in the front, not in the back, in the front. Uh, the library itself, looking to expand uh, the body house and the former police department uh, on on um, uh, Indian history. Indian history. So, in some of these topics about identifying the existing structures, what we need to do, obviously, is, is come up with what the biggest priority. And I think that the town of Hanson would agree with us that the biggest priority is investing in our highway department. Because our highway department really, is, it's a drop in the bucket. So, uh, talking about some of the plans that Mr. DeVrace has come up with and really trying to get some fruitful uh, activity out of that. As far as what that would do for us is, I was saying, drop in the bucket. So we have an immediate need, a day one need. We do have an immediate need that apparently all departments share, and that's a storage issue. So that can be resolved extremely fast by taking the Hawks Ave building and forgetting the idea of trying to change that to a, 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 a highway department and really taking some low costs, some low hanging fruit, and taking the Hawks Ave building and turning it into a dry storage area for all departments in town. Hawksaf has two buildings, so we'd be looking at taking one building, getting all the utilities connected again, 
checking out what the cost would be to the town to do that, but then affording the town the place to have dry storage. Meanwhile, taking the second building in the back, getting up the utilities to that again, and possibly offering it up as a rental space. Somebody was mentioned in, um, from, was it? Mass Wildlife. Mass Wildlife, which is right around the corner from there, to be able to offer it up as a rental, if not even more from there. So that's a day one fix that could happen like that. And then from there, keeping the ball rolling and keeping things going from now until the next uh, few months from now, and, and looking at uh, being, able, being able to create um, certain things for meeting spaces. I know that the library is looking at the community room, trying to expand for a community room. Uh, the fire, fire chief was explaining that a lot of times he's trying to do training. There's real no place, no place for, for training, like for anything like that. So that would have a community space that has all the technology needed, projector, sound system, to be able to take care of uh, trainings and things like that. Not only just for the fire chief, but for anybody else that would be in town, for any departments to do any kind of a training. As far as the former PD station goes, same kind of a thing, looking at and looking into that as an annex uh, office space, as well as up on High Street. Recent reports about the existing condition of our town hall. When that goes into a repair status, those employees are going to need a place to go. So looking at the uh, existing some of the existing structures that we have, being able to do uh, some rehab now. Uh, to be able to get those places up to up to par so that the staff from the town hall can annex to another building while town hall potentially goes through uh, a rehab and some repair. Uh, I think everybody is in agreement and thank you Mr. Clements, I think everybody is in agreement because this is a great way to describe the Bonnie House. It's the historic center of Hanson and that's the way that that should be promoted from now on as a PR campaign about that site because that site actually will become a small Sturbridge village of Hanson. So absolutely, I think everybody's in agreement with that to become an education resource uh, and, and basically come, become our historic hub of our own town here. Uh, so th that's the, the goal that we kind of sat down and we were discussing uh, with, with us kind of echoing what we've been saying for a long time, and that is that the highway department should be priority number one. Thanks for the So I'm wondering, um, just so we're not talking about this four months from exactly. now without making any exactly. forward progress, I'm wondering the dry storage, what are our next steps to get that cracking? What, what do we see as the next steps? I'm kind of looking at you, Charlie. Looking for a maybe green uh, community to get in there and stop doing solar panels or so we don't have to power it up by wire or anything else to see what we can get in there to make it work. All right, so you'll work with Ms. Green and see what kind of grants, what kind of money we're looking at cost-wise, um, and, uh, and then circle back. Uh, I, it would be ideal if we might have some kind of a proposal for October town meeting to get, if we need funding, to get that by October town meeting. Mm -hmm. um, is, does that seem like a reasonable goal, or? Yep. Okay. So we know we know that that municipal we know that uh, uh, utilities are there on the ground. So whether it be gas, water, and electric, it, they are there. So it's a matter of just being able to tap back into those. Now, for that to become a dry storage facility that's feasible for all departments, it would have to be heated. So that's a, a point that the, the fire chief was talking about was that it would have to be heated. He's got sensitive materials that need to stay at certain temperatures. But that's actually a big PR plus for that other second building. It's a heated storage, so that's huge. In addition to that, bringing in a municipal fiber connection right from the police department, which is down the street. I don't know how the MPTA would play into that, but if we got a municipal internet connection into that building on our municipal fiber network, you'd then have town municipal data. You could put in remote phone system, IP phone system, and all the security cameras could feed to wherever you needed to feed into. So those are some capital improvements that we can put into that yeah. space. Sorry, I just got a quick question. Do you necessarily need the power um, to start storing stuff in there, right? So like, for example, yeah. before the winter time, yeah. yes. would you, need, you would need power to start storing yeah. stuff in yeah. now, essentially, right? Is yeah. that because you need some fire suppression? You need fire access. You need open indoors and things like that. Yep. So we do need power. 
I may not have to heat the whole space. It just right. depends on how much space the five sheets would heat. In other words, if uh, for discussion purposes, say the building is 2,000 square feet, he only needs uh, 1,000, then uh, you know, put up a, a partition a and, and, and front, just, and just uh, heat that. I mean, the front, top, the front third of that building is already kind of partitioned off. Yep. There's a separate area so that you can heat that front uh, Okay. Too much water. And, and is it, everybody sets that we ought to have a facilities I hate to use the C word committee, because um, this seems like a lot of pent up demand, and I don't know that we really, we've got a lot of well intentioned committees doing bits and pieces, like, you know, historic might be doing something with the highway committee, but I just feel like, you know, nobody's really, other than poor child, looking at town hall and some of the other buildings. And it just seems to me like we need a holistic view, right, of priorities. Otherwise, we could have some five different committees coming to us for a town meeting asking for funding, and we don't, we don't have any vetting of what a priority is. Can I, just can I, tell you, I think uh, Charlie seems like a pretty smart guy, and I think you know if we have you know committee sounds like a great idea, but uh, we you know it could also uh, prove to uh, spin him in different directions that where he can see you focus on something that he feels is important uh, you know there's always people in town willing to complain about you know the condition of the buildings and things like that what? so uh you know I, I don't know about the committee part of it because i think it would might uh, hamstring him in, in his yeah okay of. so maybe mr baker you could work with miss green and figure out you know and then bring it to the select board and how you think that that might work but as a first preliminary thing i think getting that truck that storage that mm -hmm. that's awesome all right, thanks, Ian. Sorry, I just wanted it to do. Like, oh, no, no, absolutely. That's all I should do. Absolutely. That's great. Ms. Rain? So, we talked about, mainly talked about filling committee seats, trying to get more involvement from the townspeople in the various committees, and uh, defining the committees and defining roles on the committees, and getting that out in video format or, or on the website that explains what each committee does and you know who populates and who heads it, et cetera. Trying to define that for people so that they can go go and find out, do I really want to be on the historical committee? Do I want to be on the, the zoning board of appeals? You know, defining that properly. Um, look at one second, I just I mean, it's kind of um, sort of um, one of the problems that we have with getting people to volunteer is what I noted down as um, dealing with online innuendo and trying to help people deal with, you know, you do something and then you get snapped at and then they all pile on. And either you, like, I, I like to say that I had the height of a rhinoceros, but not everybody has that. You know, you can, so we have to try to find a way of mentoring people so that they can deal with these, the online attacks that are gonna come no matter what you do. Um, we talked about how we're going to advertise on the website and on cable. Arlene was saying that we could, um, what, what is it, the bulletin board? Or the bulletin board. We'll put it up on the bulletin board so that it shows up on the uh, cable channel. Not everybody has cable, but a lot of people do. And I know a lot of elderly people that do watch them. It's a channel nine. Yeah, they watch channel nine all the time. They're watching our meetings. They, they are actually, that's the other thing, is the committees that don't put their meetings online. That has to stop. We're going to try to find a way of, um, I don't know. Encouraging. Encourage, first encouraging, and then we're going to shame. <laughs> <laughs> we want those meetings online. We want, we want people to be able to go and get the information that they're, we don't want them making up innuendo. We want them to get the facts of what is actually going on in the Board of Health, in the Zoning Board of Appeals, or whatever, whatever committee you want to bring up. Um, advertising in the Whitman Hands, doing more with the Whitman Hands Express. I know that they love to have little blurbs to put in there, so we need to come up with more blurbs. Like when we have these committees, I, my announcement tonight uh, had a list of all the committees that we need filled. That should be in the Express so people could see what we need to have filled. And um, the last thing we talked about was using the water bills and the tax bills to put a slip in there that has this information. That goes to everybody. And if we can put one piece of paper in that tax bill, it's not gonna up on, uh, it's not gonna cost more postage, which is very expensive. The only expense you're gonna have is 
how, I don't know how they send out these bills. Nobody seems to know. Did they use a company? You know, what, what would the company charge us to put another piece of paper in? I'm not sure of what. But try to get, get at the information out there so that everybody can participate if they want to. And hopefully they will want to. So that's what we talked about. Yes? A few years prior to COVID, one of the select board meetings, I suggested volunteer fair, like a job fair. Yes. At, and I offered up the community center in Veronica. That's right, I remember that. So, you know, everybody would have a table, and then they would, people could come in and find out about me and talk to them what we do. And uh, I think some people are like, they want to help out. But they don't want to be there five days a week. Right. They, they have, well, that's, they so, have to know what the commitment is, right. the time commitment and everything. And what's involved. Right. Um, whereas some committees, there's a lot more responsibility than, like, say, being a volunteer at the library. Exactly. It's minimal. Do you get a, 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 like a job fair at I the library? That. I wonder if we could incorporate that into Hanson Day somehow, have, like, a oh, whole section yeah. of Hanson Day have like yeah. some information well, about you know, the from the um yeah because um i know karen does well as far as volunteers for the library um because a lot of seniors take advantage mm -hmm. of the plan they have um but like the foundation we used to have a lot of volunteers but people leave for whatever reason and then covid you couldn't have anything and it is like in all committees, it's the same people doing the same thing, and people are getting tired. Yes, they do, so I know. That was, you know, I mean, it could really work well, it could be a ball, too. You know, so we have mean, to make a note of that. Like, yeah, yeah, that's what we can do. That's what we can do. We can have a town hall open house, yeah. Yeah. right? Yes. With like yeah. department heads and <coughs> uh, volunteer opportunities, company, everybody. What could possibly go wrong with this?
deal with that same type in of the world. Yeah. In the world. I know, I know. So we, that's really where I was going with this. Like, is there a possibility? Well, if they're, if they're totally out of line, they can be tossed, I'm sure. Mm, not so much. Yeah. Now, you can go to recess. Yeah. Um, the other thing that might help with folks being engaged, especially if, let's say, looking for a younger crowd to get engaged, is the state is allowing hybrid meetings until 2025. And I think for a lot of people, you know, the hectic schedule, being able to say attend a meeting virtually. For instance, I'm a delegate to the Ocala Planning Council, and they have their meetings virtually, and that's how I attend. Because I can, I can, I can go from my, I can go from my office, to my house, to my living room after the meeting is done. And it makes it a lot easier if you can access meetings. That's a great point, Tony. You know, that's a really great point. Something does get lost when you're not in person, but but if you can engage more people, yeah, definitely. Chief O'Brien, sorry, I didn't see you. No, actually, just covering two things. And one probably deals more on the employee side than necessarily the boys and commissions. But I was at Abington Town Hall uh, last week, and I can't remember exactly what it said, but right on the front doors of the Town Hall, basically, I heard Paul Hulk over And it wasn't stated that way, but it basically said that. You know, good behavior, bad behavior is not going to follow me, kind of thing. And, and it, you know, for for a reasonable person, you know, that all of a sudden they get heated or something, they see that on that, and they take a breath before they go in um, over a bill or something they, they don't like or whatever. Um, but on the second thing, uh, just to echo what Tony says, is, is bringing that up to people because, well, you are missing something with the hybrid that has made it a lot easier uh, for a lot of committees and things I said on statewide. I, I don't travel to Framingham and things like that to me where it's get on the computer and do it. Um, and it's much easier when you tell people, hey, you don't have to necessarily be in the room, you can you can video in. And, and I was going to ask that question too, is does the town have a Zoom account, WebEx account, anything like that? We do. We do. Okay. So, yeah. yeah, we still have we still, Okay. Yeah. And that'd be something, I'm just throwing that out there that, you know, a resource for all the committees and things like that. Mr. Collins, I'm sorry. I was just going to say, uh, when it comes to conduct or how you control or how you invite uh, freedom of speech and so on, I think it might be, I'm just going to say as a chair of conservation, maybe a little more solid training available to people who run the people who chair the people who chair hearings, because you know, we have some very full room. But what we're trying to do is, first of all, we emphasize that this meeting is being recorded for the public record and all the members of the commission and all the members of the public should keep that in mind. Uh, but also, uh, just the way we conduct our meetings and our hearings, it should be in a way that encourages people to, to participate, but in the right way. And let them know that if they're participating very badly, that's on the record. You know, and, and I don't know who gets to decide whether it's shown on cable TV or community TV, but um, I think that we can not only discourage the bad, but encourage the good. And maybe a, a little more training than what we get through whatever means we, we already get for training of people you know, how to conduct a meeting. Because if you're chairing what it's your meeting. And there may be points where you hit the button on the table and the suit the guy shows up. But um, <laughs> you may, may have to have a meeting. Uh, but yeah, there's a process. There was she some like um, how to deal with difficult personalities or in hearing or Laura, there is a webinar regulating comments at public meetings, legal and operational perspective coming up on Monday, June fifth, MMA. Oh, I ha I have that one. So that's because of the Supreme Judicial Court case, right. which which gets back to the fact that people have First Amendment exactly. rights. Yes. But to Mr. Clemens' point. Somebody could properly cheer a meeting so as to mitigate right. the possible damage that somebody who might be intended on doing damage would have. Right. Um, so it's a delicate balance. We do want to, of course, preserve people's rights. We have rights. We all enjoy them. We want everybody to enjoy them, not abuse them. Yes, sir, we make a point of saying this is a public hearing. That means we want to hear you. Right. We're not going to just say things and expect you just to listen. Right. It's a two-way thing. But everyone will get their turn, even if it's not tonight. 
my continue to say, next meeting, or this meeting, if you need to get information from the applicant, there's a lot to get. But uh, uh, please bring your comments and questions to uh, people later on. So I go to the next session, uh, and everyone will get you a chance. And I would encourage people, Ms. Green, I don't know if you had a chance to send your arms to all the uh, members and heads um, that the MMA invited, it's an open invite, it doesn't cost anything to attend. It's an hour, I think it's a 12 to 1. Um, and it just will lay out the you know, Supreme Judicial Court and what that decision was and, and kind of what to keep in mind. Um, it's based on our case, and I think it was South Bridge. Um, and uh, so it's just important. Now, same question to you, Mrs. Rain. What is our immediate to do? What's our immediate deliverable and how we're going to do it? I know you said you were going to look into the insert. You're going to talk to the treasurer collector and look into the insert into the water and and tax bills. That seems like a good first step. Um, and what I'm else still I'm still waiting for bones of that website. I want to see how that's going to be organized and so that it's easy for our townspeople to find information. That to me is right, right at, that's the basis of everything. And then I'm wondering, and I'm looking at this at all, um, and you're not close enough to get me to the table, um, is uh, I'm wondering if we could start very slowly by thinking what committees and boards frequently have openings? And is there a way for us to work with the chairs or the department heads in those um, to come up with a description of what that committee does. Or perhaps it's already on there, we just need to repurpose it and put it someplace a little bit more visible when we're looking for openings. Um, so I know you've got a list that you have Ms. Mrs. Rain read tonight of the openings we currently have. Maybe we start with those. I know Capital Improvement, Conservation, um, ZBA, I think Historic Commission. It's a good little smattering of them. Um, maybe we could start with those. And again, I don't think we have to reinvent the wheel. Um, all the towns across Massachusetts and perhaps even the United States have had various iterations of these committees and boards. We can, e you know, we can easily plagiarize and tweak a little bit and get there. And I don't think we'll be super heavy lifting. Um, so I think those would be a good few things. So we're going to try to plan on our next meeting sometime in mid October ish. Um, Lynn, you're going to get minutes to everybody so that we kind of all know what we said we wanted to work on. The board of selectmen will take under advisement whether we think we need how we're going to work with Mr. Baker on the facilities. And Mr. Baker, you're going to work with Ms. Green on the cold call it, Operation Cold Storage. Um, I don't know if it sounds more possessive. Um, dry storage. Dry storage. <laughs> um, all right, and then, um, and then we'll continue to work um, you know, with Ms. Green and with the Capital Strategic Solutions on, uh, on the website. Uh, is there anything else that yes? That's perfect. That's great. All right. So mark the calendar for October 17th. Um, and mark here. Here. Yep. Um, anything else that anybody wanted to cover? Yeah. I actually had something I wanted to throw out. It was something I had a few discussions with a few different uh, board members. Uh, from different boards uh, in town hall. And I think it's actually something we do need to encapsulate quickly. With the impact, and I, and I would throw it out there that we should call it the an impact subcommittee. With the impact that we're getting ready to get hit with in regards to some of the 40B development, the MBTA, I know it's just a zoning, but if it was to be developed, uh, with the impact of what we're gonna have with these different uh, developments that are coming out, there's going to be more. I, Mr. Clemens made a great point that 55 plus community not as impacting on the school departments. However, internally inside the town, I think that we do need to have some stakeholders from land use, you know, whatever, wherever we're at, wherever it would be that would be important to be able to sit back and look and see just exactly the financial impact of what some of these uh, developments are going to have on our town. Last town meeting, we accepted two roads, or we, we accepted a road, but we have another road that's coming before a town going through the whole process now of deeds and registrations and other. So that acceptance of this past uh, town meeting, that is going to have an impact on the town with fees and, and costs. Uh, so I think that by having those, it gives us a good litmus test to be able to see what are the financial requirements of some of these decisions that we are making at town hall. I think that at this last town meeting, 
Was there a possibility that a decision was made that really sandbagged the town into more of a financial debt? Absolutely, 100%. We didn't have the opportunity to be able to stretch it out to see. It wasn't fast enough for us to be able to project down the road and see what was going to come. What does it cost the town to do a taking or make a street from private to public? As well as the impact of the 40 Bs on, say, the fire department, the police department. Some of this stuff has heavy and hefty regulation. So that there is going to be, I really think that we should have an impact, uh, an impact subcommittee on some of these major decisions about how that's going to play out five years, ten years down the road. So, um, can I ask a couple of questions? Sure. So, how would you envision this? Like, as those projects come up, then maybe uh, like a adjunct meeting, or it's meeting on an ongoing basis, or and, and second question, Mr. Kirch, Kincher, have you seen anything like this in other towns that you've dealt with? Uh, not directly, but I have talked to some town administrators like that kind of do what you said. They have some models and stuff, financial models for development. Mm -hmm. You know, they have schools and this and that. So again, plagiarization. Like if there's a forty, I think it's easy to have a specific project and analyze that instead of like Logos or say there's going to be forty new developments going to create a hundred blah blah blah. Then I think from that data we could probably. Financial yeah, I think that I think what the dangers of that though is that everybody gets hyper focused on just the 40B. They don't go and look and see how does it affect a, a fire, and then fire can come in with, by having a few different stakeholders across the town. Fire can come in. I would never think that EMS would be as strapped. I would think that the fire engines are more, more strapped. You know, but so there's there's different departments. So taking it from that side of it, getting a little bit higher to see a, a better town wide impact. Yeah. So so maybe just like a. Um, like a 40 B impact, just like everybody in their department, build, inspect, the fire, police, and stuff like water, that. water, water, water. And just, just future impact. Yeah. yeah. So just say, how is this project going to affect your resources in your department? Like initial step, and you just take all that information and get it together because you have all the experts, subject matter experts, and just something to facilitate that whole discussion and put it all together in one impact or total impact. Yeah, you guys yeah. And I don't know whether that would be a department acting through the town administrator, but I just wanted to put it out there. If I may add, I think that if we are looking to add a uh, commission study written report of where we're going to be in five years, ten years, that different metrics in there of the population is X and then five years later it's Y, what does that do to the overall budget um, and where would we be five years from now in terms of a, a total annual budget? If we're at round figures, $35 million at town population today, providing services for the town. Five years from now, if that's population plus 20%, what does that, those numbers correlate to? Yeah, I think Ms. Green and Mr. Kurt Kinchuk are wondering if the Madden report that we've commissioned, if there's some way to either have a, some kind of a tool that you can give us that we could use, or give us some metrics that we apply as these numbers come in to, you guys can do all that, I'm not necessarily, like yeah. I know you'll have to go back and ask him. And then Mr. Pelosi, did you have anything? Yes, yeah. I just had a question. So I don't think the, I mean, finance is obviously important, but I don't think finance is necessarily the most important part of one. So for example, like, you know, it'd be great to know that if our pocket, if this 40 became, we'd make an X amount more dollars in revenue, but we'd have to buy a new ambulance, or we'd have to get two more police officers with cars, so, you know, I don't know if it, it, is there a committee that you can, not necessarily a voting committee, but more of like a, 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 a discussion committee that would have like planning board chair, fire chief, police chief, and they would write essentially a, 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 just an impact saying this is what would happen, and then it would go to the various committee, the planning board, or the conservation. Um, it wouldn't be like a vote to approve, vote to, it would just be like a just discussion. And, Send it off that one. Wasn't there yeah. something like that in Brain Tree? Like, yeah. so, well, go ahead. Yeah. And, uh, you know, what, what they used to do is uh, all the farmers were required to, uh, before they issued permits for uh, you know, any kind of development, that impact uh, report was done. So, you know, and, and you can like decide what part of that impact you want. You know, you can say, this is what I want. I want to know uh, what these costs and how, how it affects everything as a whole. So, I, I don't know. Perspective of how they did it, and that, you know, but all of the, the land use boards met regularly uh, for you know uh, super meetings, and most of what was discussed was you know uh, okay if we allow this you know 
50 unit complex to be built, what's the impact of the town long term, short term? Well, I, so I, would you allow us the opportunity to put that on a select board um, agenda yes. and then we'll invite various um, groups and we can talk about it further and see it. But I, I think that that cross-pollination and sharing of information, which is what we're all about here, um, that's a perfect place for that to happen. It doesn't have to be strictly about finances. One of the things that I was blown away by with COVID, what was the impact on COVID to the power supply? The foot traffic that is down there now is unbelievable. It's 25 times greater than it was before. <laughs> yeah. Which means it's yeah. 25 times more dogs there too. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, pretty good. So, the, so the impact on that is, you know, the, the impact and kind of stuff like that. What 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 is the impact of the barge on which it's not so much hands on responsibility, but yeah. but these are the things that we, we don't see um, uh, coming out to the woodwork on the table for me to discuss. But they're huge for us. I, I did just, I was a little remiss at the beginning. I meant to introduce our new select board member, um, David George, um, who's sitting right next to Mrs. Rain. He's a rose between two thorns. He's a twin. <laughs> So we welcome him and look forward to working with him. And um, I did, can I have just some closing remarks? Oh, absolutely. Okay. Um, so uh, I, this was great. I'm sorry we kind of overstayed our welcome a little and, um, you know, uh, went a little longer than normal. But I think when we get all of you lovely people in a room and everybody's so passionate about what they're doing and you're spending so much of whether it's you're doing it as your job or as a volunteer, um, you know, you're living and breathing this, and let's let's face it, folks. This doesn't make for you know light cocktail banter. Um, so, and, you know, we're probably amongst the only people that really want to hear about this from one another. So, um, you know, I really appreciate all the work that you all are doing every day. Uh, I I really um, feel extremely um, grateful for you guys spending the time here for all the work that you do. I love seeing people meeting people and cross-pollinating and sharing ideas because that's the best of us. Um, so uh, I thank you so much and um, mark your calendars for October 17th. And um, I don't know if there was anything else you wanted to say. No, it was All right. energy. Yeah, it was great. All right, thank you so much, guys.